colleagues, greetings from the Commonwealth of Learning. It's good to be virtually present at this important meeting and present call. As you know, CALL is an intergovernmental organization established by Commonwealth heads of government when they met in Vancouver for Chogam 1987. And of the three Commonwealth intergovernmental organizations, we are the only ones not in London. Our mission is to help Commonwealth member states and institutions to use technologies for expanding access to education and training. Every three years, we prepare an account of our work entitled Call in the Commonwealth Country Reports. This compendium of what Call has done in each member state in the last three years is a substantial document that you can download from our website. We presented paper copies of what we've done in each country to ministers of education at the 20th CCEM in Fiji and plan to share these reports with Ministers of Foreign Affairs during Chogam next month. These reports measure our progress against the targets set in our strategic plan. After wide consultations across the Commonwealth, we developed our strategic plan 2015-2021, which is entitled learning for sustainable development. Based on your priorities, we have organized our work in two sectors, education and skills, with gender as a cross-cutting theme. We try to achieve impact by harnessing the potential of existing and new technologies. Call's role is to help member states to make full use of the potential of technologies. Our work is closely aligned with Sustainable Development Goal 4, the goal on education, which aspires to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and lifelong learning opportunities for all by 2030. Call believes that learning is the key to sustainable development which is our common future. Learning must lead to three things. It must lead to opportunities for economic growth, social inclusion, and environmental conservation. Let me demonstrate this with some examples of our work. First, how has CALL supported economic growth? CALL's Commonwealth Executive Masters in Business Administration Masters in Public Administration program is offered by universities in 11 countries. This high quality distance learning program has enrolled over 30,000 learners of whom 14,000 have already graduated. A recent study conducted at the Allama Iqbal Open University Pakistan indicates that the graduates of this program saw an increase of 38% in their monthly income, increased their chances of promotion by over 28%, and every dollar invested resulted in $3.40 in direct returns for the learners. Ministers of Education, this is my second example, directed call to establish a virtual university for small states of the Commonwealth, or WASC. All small states, all 31 of them in the Commonwealth, are active members of this consortium. Small states develop courses collaboratively based on their needs that are then available as open educational resources, not just to the members of the consortium, but to anyone anywhere in the world. 23 institutions in 14 countries are offering these courses. As a result, tuition fees for the WASC students has been reduced by 69% as compared to a campus institution in Botswana. The majority of WASC learners combine work and study, and by saving on opportunity costs, are able to get more benefits than campus students in any one year. 
Non-formal learning is equally important as we know. These women in India are part of CALL's Lifelong Learning for Farmers project, under which they have learned agriculture and enterprise development skills using basic mobile phones. Every dollar invested has generated assets worth $9. In Kenya, CALL supported women to start agri-enterprises, and a recent study concluded that learning leads to empowerment. And for every 1% increase in empowerment, there's a 2.3% increase in profits. So let's come to the second part. How does CALL's work support social inclusion? As countries achieve success in providing universal primary education, there are still significant barriers preventing many young people from entering secondary education. Open schools can provide flexible learning opportunities through the use of open and distance learning. These young students go to a call-supported open school in Belize, and research shows that for every dollar invested, eight dollars worth of benefits have accrued to students. A call study shows that open schooling costs well below formal secondary schools. The National Institute of Open Schooling India costs one-tenth, and the Namibian College of Open Learning costs one-fifth of what it costs to put a student through a government secondary school. It's for this reason that 27 Commonwealth countries have established open schools to expand access to secondary schooling. We know that not everyone in the Commonwealth has internet connectivity. To overcome this, CALL developed Aptus, or the Classroom Without Walls, which is a low-cost offline virtual classroom that provides learners in remote locations with access to digital resources. Aptus has been deployed with effective outcomes in Pakistan, Kiribati, Samoa, and Vanuatu, and could be a useful tool for you to reach the last mile. In fact, we are going to do this in Tonga following Cyclone Gita. Even today, we find a wide prevalence of early child and forced marriage across the Commonwealth. Call is training girls and women in Bangladesh, India, Pakistan, Mozambique, and Tanzania for employment and entrepreneurship. In the last two years, more than 34,000 girls have been trained. Over 7,000 have new sources of income, and nearly 500 child marriages have been averted. A recent study found that as a result of this training, the probability of being employed had increased by 50% and income had increased fivefold. We come to the third point, what is CALL's contribution to environmental conservation? Environmental sustainability is a central concern for everyone, but particularly for the small states. A recent study conducted in Botswana showed that the carbon footprint of a WASC distance learning student was only one third of that of a campus-based student. My second example is working with the Blue Economy Institute in Seychelles. Call supported the development of an online course in this emerging field, which was offered free by the University of Seychelles last year. It attracted 247 learners from 24 countries worldwide. Call is also working with the National Teachers Institute Nigeria to develop a green teacher course which will ensure that teachers inculcate environmental concerns amongst school children from very early stages. You'll be pleased to note that for 2015-16, we received an A++ rating from DFID for substantially exceeding expectations in outputs and outcomes. 
over the past two years, more than 370,000 learners have been reached, 50% being women. Over 110 institutions around the Commonwealth have adopted call models and materials, and we supported the development of over 2,200 curricula and learning resources. How was this possible? Call is small. This was possible by working with 280 partners in 42 countries and by harnessing appropriate technologies. These colleagues are a few examples of how learning leads to sustainable development. As we conclude 30 years of service to the Commonwealth, we have constantly renewed ourselves over the years to remain relevant to your needs. Call is a source of world-class expertise in open distance and technology-based approaches. And in these times of limited resources, these approaches will be fundamental to securing our common future. Let me conclude by thanking your ministers of education for nominating focal points who are our direct link to your countries and are a valuable resource for shaping our agenda. More than three-fourths of Commonwealth countries make voluntary contributions to CALS budget. We consider this an important indicator of your confidence in us. Thank you for your contributions, both financial and intellectual, and for your kind attention. Thank you.